got up, got up, and got after and motivated, and God blessed you. Amen. Amen. If uh, you were able to be productive today, God blessed you. Amen. Bless you and bring you to God's house once again. We don't take it lightly that God's house should be overlooked. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sunday morning services are wonderful, Pastor. Man, it feels just a lot for those Sunday night and Wednesday night. That's just as important. Yeah. That feels a tank. I look at Northside and I think that we're blessed in a lot of ways in that we have a lot of unity here. Um, we walk together and we agree. But it's sad to think that a lot of churches, Satan, the father of lies, has snuck in. Yeah. And he's trying to divide and conquer. He knows that he can get in here and he can get one side to disagree with the other side. He can divide and conquer that church, Pastor, and it becomes of no effect. There's no soul winning. There's, there's no spirit that. But you and I, as a congregation here in Northside, we've been blessed that we're in harmony and sync with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the great evidence was of that child getting saved on Sunday, Aaliyah Williams. That showed that we were all in one mind and one accord. Amen. Place. And that's Amen. how we need to be. Yeah. Tonight we're going to be looking at Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 12. So let's turn to Corinthians, chapter 12, and we'll be starting with verse 12. Paul addresses the Corinthians, among other things, about church division. Church division. Corinth, if you look at it geographically, if you find a map of the a country Greece, look roughly halfway between Athens and Sparta, and you find Corinth. Paul first went to Corinthians 52 A.D. Yeah. And there he met Priscilla and Aquila. Yes, 52 A.D. That's where he met Priscilla and Aquila. They worked together and traveled together. Bible readers, what were their occupations? What was their occupation? They were tent makers. Who said that? Brother James? Yes, sir. They were tent makers. And they took that opportunity to witness for the kingdom of heaven the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, but as we're looking here in Corinthians, Paul in his first epistle, he addresses a, a, a some things as well. He's addressing first and foremost as we open the chapter, the diversities of gifts being under one spirit. Mm -hmm. The diversities of gifts being under one spirit. That one spirit is one church, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, amen. Now as Christians, we, we worship a monotheistic God. That means one God, singular, right, brother Tim? We don't worship four gods. But there is three parts to the God. And we realize that that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is what leads us. We get in tune with the Holy Ghost, Pastor. And when we do that, we can start seeing things happen in our local assembly. But like I said earlier, as I opened up, we have an adversary who I'm about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to divide and conquer. Just like ancient armies and modern armies, if they can go into the enemy and divide the enemy, they can conquer two smaller components. And that's what the devil wants to do here at Northside. He wants to divide, making two smaller components, therefore he can conquer. I don't know for many churches I've seen that God wrote Ichabod over the door and they closed. People break up over silly things. Churches break up over crazy things. Maybe uh, somebody didn't get to sing enough. Maybe they didn't like the preacher. Maybe they didn't. Uh, maybe they didn't get to do things that they wanted to do, and they get they get mad and they get complacent and they sit on the pew and they start growing up. And what they do is Paul says they get puffed up, puffed up, and they get full of themselves. And the next thing you know, the harmony and sync with the Holy Ghost is disrupted. Right. And then there's trouble in the congregation. So let's look here, starting with verse 12. We know that if you want to read earlier uh, verses, we know in chapter 12, Paul is dealing with about the diversities of gifts being all under one spirit. And that's the spirit of the Holy Ghost. But tonight we're going to be preaching on the subject of division. division. Paul's also dealing with Corinthians, Corinthians on division. Be careful, be careful. For as the body is one, singular, and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are what, church? One body, singular. So also is Christ. We have a physical body, but we have many members. We have two arms, we have two legs, we have feet, we have hands, we have fingers, eyes, ears, noses. I'm just kidding, just one nose. 
then we become hearers and not what church? Yes. Doers. We're about, we've got to be doers of God's word. Right. If the whole were hearing, where were the what? Smelling. If all we did was listen to God's word and fail to act on it, then guess what? When the pastor gives that opportunity, what do we do? More times than not at the end of a service, what do we do? Pray. Yes. Bless you, sister. So if we all heard the word of God, and then when the pastor said, let's come to the altar and pray, and we all sit there, what would happen? What does God say about our prayers? They're a sweet-smelling walk. Yes. Do you realize if we get out of the natural and get in the supernatural, when we get up here, we would have a feast. We could smell some beautiful smells. You ever been Amen. to a rose garden? You ever been somewhere where the, the, a lot of lilacs and daisies and honeysuckle? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got a great smell. And that's what our prayers smell like to God. Amen. Amen. Because we're in one mind and one, one accord. Uh -huh. One mind and one accord. So don't just be a hearer of the word, be a what? Doer of the word as well. And get your faith. Get up here and activate that faith through prayer. That's important. Oh, Luis just got hit in the back of the head with something. <laughs> He's mean. He's a mean old guy. What a pray for that boy. Oh. I'm just kidding. He's a good young man. Listen, the main thing is that our adversary has got us in his sights. Paul talks very specifically about church division. We're one body, one mind, one accord, all acting under the tutelage of the Holy Ghost. Don't fall for the wiles and propaganda of the devil when he tells you, oh, it's okay, you don't have to go to church, you don't have to pray, uh, you don't have to believe what the preacher preaches. Well, the preacher's preaching out of the King James Bible, but I think that I don't believe in the King James Bible. I don't think that I, I believe what the preacher's telling me, so I'm going to stub up and puff up and get mad. And I'm going to do that, but I'm not just going to carry that load myself. I'm going to start talking among the, the congregation and saying, do you realize that what the preacher's preaching is a lie? You see, that starts discord. Right? That causes a schism, a schism in the body of Christ. What is a schism? Well, schism is from the Greek word schisma, meaning to rent. What is a rent? It's a tear. Yeah. To divide. Dissension. Dissension, not dissension, but dissension. D-I-S. And that means to argue to the point of discord. Argue to the point of discord. Disagree to the point of discord. Be wary of those schisms that Satan is trying to set up in our congregation. We've got to be wary of his wiles. And how do we do that? How do we protect against the wiles of the devil, the propaganda of Satan? Well, we attend church and we learn more about our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. And we learn that when we're in tune with the Holy Ghost, guess what? God really hears our prayers, doesn't he? God really honors our prayers and our actions. Remember last week when I preached, I said, how do we prove our own work? When it passes God's inspection. My work is not to be approved by you, and your work is not to be approved by me, but God puts his inspection on it, and he passes it. Then, guess what? You'll see the fruit of that labor. If you say you're a preacher, but yet you lay out a church, I just think making no sense to me. If you're a teacher, and you're laying out a church, I don't understand that. Well, I've got this, and I've got that going on, and you know what, if and every every excuse in the book, you can, if you need an excuse, there's a book called the Book of Excuses. Go check it out at the library. But you know what, as a Christian, we shouldn't go and look at the Book of Excuses. What well, Jesus has excuses and says, I don't think I'll go to Calvary today. It's too hot. I want to stay, I want to stay back home and hang with my bro and I want to play some PlayStation. I want to chill. I want to watch some football. I don't think I'm going to go out there and die for them old rascals. Well, here's the thing. Jesus Christ died for our sins. Are we any better? I was a sinner and I'm saved by grace and merited faith. What Christ did on Calvary, the 
is what got me saved. There you go. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood was what? The atonement. Right. The blood was shed for the sins of the whole world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are all precious in his sight. Even the Amen. <coughs> Red, brown, yellow, black and white. They are all precious in his sight. But now in 18 has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased the pastor. He's God. Oh, I'm sorry. As it has pleased the deacon. No, God. As it has pleased the busybody. God. Oh, as it has pleased him. Yeah, God is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. So it's not what we think, it's what God knows. Amen. What God knows ain't passion. It's not what we think, but it's what God knows. Amen. He's put you in a position. Remember, some other feet, the body can't go. Say that I'm working, and I need a tool, and it's at the end of that table. Unless I'm Stretch Armstrong, I can't get it. So my feet take me to get it that I need to work. So the feet are as important as the hands. Man, very important. Very important. And if they were all one member, where were the body? What if everybody was an eye? What if you came to church and all you see was hands that that's up everywhere? Well, you got to have hearing.
appreciate you, brother, for what you do on the guitar. I appreciate Brother Stephen for his ministry. I appreciate the pastor for giving me opportunity after opportunity to preach God's Word and to do the things that I do at this church. But it's all God and it's all the Holy Ghost. And Amen. All in his the vision causes a lot of heartache and trouble. Right. And it takes longer to heal sometimes. Right. You know, you know, we should have just thought about it. How long does it think how long does it take for us to think to do something? Just a split thing. But it takes longer, much longer for people to heal or run right. state. Over one misplaced word, over one misplaced look. Something that you're not meaning to do and you hurt somebody's feelings. It takes a long time for them to recover. I was talking to uh, some people that I met in the house. And they were signing their children up for piano, and they were out of church. And the way they said it is that they have been hurt so many times, they just started a church in their house. And I'm thinking, something's wrong. You've got your eye off God and put your eye on people. Because if you go to church, you can be hurt. I guarantee it. Yeah. You can be hurt tonight. Yeah. If you go to look, if you go with a chip on your shoulder, Pastor, you're going to be hurt. Yes, sir. They'll knock it right off. But I don't come to church looking for faults or to be hurt. I come to look to be a blessing and to get a blessing. Oh, and that's Amen. what it is to be a Christian. Yeah. That's what it is to be Christ like. And that's what we really need to focus on here at Northside. Why am I preaching this message? We just come out of the play, uh, Christmas play season. And everybody, even though it seemed like we was at each other, uh, Sister Brandy done a wonderful job. I mean, we were all just like on cloud nine. You know, on that night that we had that play, it's wonderful. The spirit is just flowing. Everybody's right. having a great time. The Holy Ghost is moving. And guess what? When we get a victory over something, guess what happens the next thing we know? The enemy shows up at the gate. Yeah. If the enemy hears that you're having fun and having a good time and praising God, guess what?